Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our afternoon session of Vic South Star Party with the uh, Star Party quiz. So today, uh, Fraser Farrell from the Astronomical Society of South Australia is going to host the annual Vic South um, quiz. Uh, so be sure to have your pen and paper ready to test your knowledge and remember, Googling answers only cheats yourself. As I said on the previous stream, it's like a game of golf you know, and you pick the ball up and move it to a better spot, it's only cheating yourself. So see how much knowledge you have. Uh, also, another reminder, make sure you grab your raffle tickets, uh, Skywatcher, Star Adventurer, Motorized Mount, donated by TSA Outdoors and Skywatcher, and the one for the iOptron Cube Pro with the tripod, which was donated by Sidereal Trading. $5 a ticket, all the money goes to both the Astronomical Society of Australia, uh, South Australia and the Astronomical Society Society of Victoria, uh, both non-profit organisations. So let's welcome Fraser into the room to take over and run the quiz. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, quiz for the Big oh, South 2020, which is... I will just let everyone know that Fraser's having yeah. some internet issues, so he may be a little bit jittery every now and then, so just bear with him. No. Okay, I shall speak slowly or... <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Uh, hopefully, you can see my screen right now. There we go. Should be yeah. Should be reading Vic South 2020, the pandemic quiz. It is. It definitely is. And with a very appropriate photo, which really sums up the year, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. I remember you know, battling for toilet paper. You know, I remember back when we were a kid, you know, we thought it'd be cities on the moon by now, you know, and instead we fight each other in coals for toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, kind of a crazy year, um, but gradually picking up. Um, actually, for our Victorian listeners, um, I have to report the South Australian government actually may let you guys across the border very soon without setting off any landmines or uh, other restrictions. Have they reduced uh, the landmines across the border, have they? Uh, well, well, we're not sure. The rumour is they are being removed. Uh, yeah, they're allowing Sydney people in already. Yeah, I know, and they're contaminated more than we are at the moment. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, there was a newspaper article I was reading this morning, actually. South Australia actually has more active cases than Victoria right now. You know, all the people in quarantine. <laughs> they're hotels. all in quarantine. No, they don't count. <laughs> yeah, anyhow. <laughs> On with your everyone's team. grabbed a pencil and paper. I mean, I can't see any of you, so, you know, feel free to uh, walk out or scratch yourself or, yeah, drink beer or whatever. Uh, and let's get underway. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. All right. As a, um, it's been a good year for uh, humour. <laughs> Hope you can all see that screen. Yes, I can see it. So if I can yeah. see it, everyone can see it. So it's got a, a wheelie bin and yep. the Lego coronavirus <laughs> panic Lego panic. Yeah, top selling item. Yeah. So I'll leave that one up for you so it all downloads. All right. Yeah. Anywho, let's move on. Yeah, unfortunately, there has been a change in the format. We will not be doing any of the Mars bar questions. <laughs> None of the Mars bar questions this year. Sorry. Yeah, we'll bring it back hopefully next year live. In person. We'll all see each other again. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, question one. Uh, who was the first astronomer to definitely see Uranus. So not the first astronomer who thought they saw Uranus, but the first astronomer who actually, who did, who, who actually did see it, yeah. Confirmed that they saw Uranus. Well, 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 the first sighting of it, not necessarily that he recognised it as a planet, but definitely saw it and recorded it somehow. Oh, just Gavin says he bought his own Mars bars, Fraser, so... All right, Gavin. Well, sorry that there's no Mars bar questions unless you award yourself a Mars bar for each of the regular questions, in which case you'll probably have a bad outbreak of zits on Monday morning. And, and you'll be in the hospital with a heart, heart failure. <laughs> heart failure and sugar overload. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now you've all had a think about that one. 
moving on to question two. Next question. All right. In question two, in 1981, you know, AIDS was first recognised in humans and the BBC released a TV series featuring the advice, don't panic. What is the name of this TV series? Good question. I had no idea. Yeah, I, was only three, I was only three years old. Oh, well, oh. Okay, I was in uni then, but anyway. Yeah, in 1981, AIDS was first recognised in humans and the BBC released a TV series featuring the advice, don't panic, what's the name of the TV series? You'll start to detect a theme as we move through these questions, people. It'll become pretty evident. <laughs> oh. All right. We've got someone answering the questions in the, in the comments and um, I, I now... Yeah, I that's fine. Yep. 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 All right. that's fine. yep. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can't actually see the comments, Mark. No, no, that's yeah. okay. I'll let yeah. you know they got the answer right when they put the answer All right. right. Okay, yep. <laughs> okay, question three. What are the first names of the two original oh. Blues Brothers? I know this one. It's my well, favorite I imagine one. most people would know this one. Yeah. Movies. yeah. I think we've played that movie at most of the Vic South so far. It's become a bit of a cult thing. First names of the two original Blues Brothers. Two very good actors, one gone before his time. Yeah, yeah. Although possibly self-inflicted too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Yeah. All right, question four. Uh, as of the beginning of the... Out Starlink satellites have been launched. Yeah, some how many Starlink these satellites of, have been launched? I know how many are going to be launched. No, no, no. We know there's launched. thousands are going to be launched. We want to know how many have already been launched as of the beginning of this month. Um, you can make an estimate. I do have an exact number according to SpaceX, but feel free to make an estimate. Remember, um, people, no Googling. No one's going yeah, to space. Yeah, and in, in, incidentally, you know, far too <laughs> freaking many is not an acceptable answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a country area. I'm kind of torn here between, okay, yeah, they're going to spoil my night sky a bit, but also my internet should improve tremendously. It's the, uh, it, it, it's, which one is the lesser of two evils, hey? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a dilemma, really. But anyway, okay. Moving on to... Question five. All right. Well, a bubonic plague outbreak forced Isaac Newton to study at home for about 18 months, and during which he discovered a fundamental force of the universe. Which force? Oh, so look, there's, there, there's a way to pass your time in lockdown, people, is yet discover some new physics. <laughs> right? Shakespeare reputedly wrote some of his best plays during another plague lockdown. Yeah, I okay. yes, yeah, yeah. So, which and fundamental what, and what force have we of the universe? Done? Well, we all, we all went shopping for toilet paper and flour. Yeah, um, I learned I learned how to get the clouds mod into Kerbal Space Program, but uh, that's my biggest accomplishment so far. <laughs> okay, so which fundamental force of the universe did Isaac Newton discover? All right. Moving on to question six, if I see an angiosperm, what am I looking at? I can see angiosperm, what am I looking at? If I can oh. see an angiosperm, what am I looking at? They're probably all around you. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm looking out of the, my window right now. I can see several <laughs> angiosperms. Okay. Oh, I think I know what that is now. Uh, well, that was a bit of a clue for you guys. All mm. uh, right. Going along. All right. Question seven. There was a swine flu pandemic broke out in 2009. 
And in that same year, which famous sci-fi reboot featured Eric Banner as the oh. movie's villain? I know that one too. Good movie that yeah. was. Mark, you're not typing the answers into the comments, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not. No, not at all. We have two people who are trying to battle each other out in the comments section with answers, and we have a oh, grumpy Gavin, and we have a grumpy Gavin because people are putting the answers in the their answers in the comment section. And as I told <sighs> him, I said to him, "Let them be. I'm enjoying seeing the answers because I can see right answers and wrong answers, and it's pretty cool." <laughs> uh, I can't read it. Okay. I might have to cut back out of full screen and read some of this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, people, you're starting to see the theme of the quiz here this year. Yeah, it's all like plague related. <laughs> it is. All right. Question eight. What is the third most abundant chemical element in the universe? The third most abundant. We got hydrogen. We got helium. What's oh my gosh, do you know what's really funny about this, Fraser? I've just yes. noticed it and I didn't notice it. And Lee and Katie, I'm sorry I didn't even tick a, a click. It's uh, partners are in different rooms of the house, both logged into Facebook, trying to out answer each other in the comments section. Uh. <laughs> Uh, and Lee says that he thinks uh, her internet is better than hers as well because <laughs> her answers keep popping up before his. Oh, this is good. <laughs> oh, right. Um, uh, have they got their cameras and microphones on? Are we about to hear a domestic? Or... <laughs> no, we won't be able to hear it, unfortunately, although yeah, they're, yeah, in yeah. Melbourne. they're in Melbourne, so I might be able to hear them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand you guys have been to shut up indoors for months now so the stress yeah, of we're getting just, to we're all the people we, just, we, we all walked outside the other week and got and and just burst into flames when the sun hit us yeah 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 similar thing here when we restarted there was a long weekend not short shortly afterwards and yeah people from adelaide came down here and just went a bit mad it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay that's question eight okay going to question nine all right question nine what is the moon's orbital period in days with respect to the stars? So, so not with yeah, respect to Earth, with respect, with to, respect the to the stars. Yeah, you know, the sidereal period, as they call it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to be super precise here, you know. Um, you don't want, like, halves and quarters? Uh, well, you can go to, like, the first decimal point kind of, precision you know point one of a day so they just said katie has just said that uh, they there won't be a domestic they just like quizzes so these are two these are two so fraser these are two new asv members um yeah. i've got a feeling that they're going to become regulars at vic south uh in the years to come these two so you're going right. to have a couple of um we'll have to separate them onto different tables to have them fight out amongst each other with different groups of people well, you know how that works, Mark. Um, you know, during the actual live Vic South, when we before we start the quiz, I ask people to like look around, see if you're sitting on the smartest table or not, and if not, move. <laughs> well, I think I was telling you the story <laughs> earlier. Um, yeah. Last time I was up when and Blake was there. Um, for those listening, Blake is uh, 13 years old, um, loves his astronomy. Back then, he would have been about 11. And uh, yeah. nobody on the table answered. I think he, I think from memory, he answered nearly every single question right. Um, and he won yeah. a case of wine. And he's eleven. He was eleven years old. A case of wine and a whole lot of chocolate. Suffice to say, the wine got separated amongst all of the adults, and and uh, he had fun <sighs> with all the chocolate. <laughs> oh, Jane. So okay. <laughs> future. If anyone wants to know what table to sit on at Vic South in future, you sit on Blake's table because. You've got a good chance. Mm. All right. All right. Next question. Okay, next question. Now, in 1865, Joseph Lister discovered disinfectants. And in the same year, Comet Temple Tuttle was discovered. And or shower does this comet produce? Oh, so... This is good because we've got both these. So I'm just going to 
go on with this battle of the greens. We're going to call it the green, the battle of the greens. So for the last question, they've both got slightly different answers. So we are going to decimal places just to see which one of them wins and which one's sleeping in the doghouse tonight. Um, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm... Oh, I fear we may provoke a divorce here, Mark, if we push yeah, it too that's far. All right. you know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in 1865, Com Temple Tuttle was discovered periodic, and Joseph Lister discovered how not to kill his patients after surgery. <laughs> now, which annual meteor shower does Comet Temple Tuttle produce? Okay. All right, moving along. We have question 11. Who or what made the first soft landing on the moon? And here's a clue, people. It, unfortunately, it wasn't Wallace and Gromit in <laughs> Grand Day Out. Yes, I love that movie too, but uh, <laughs> it's fictional. Yeah, but some people think the moon landing is fictional. Yeah, well, you know, I point out to them, you know, the Soviet Union didn't think it was fictional at the time. Well, they still don't think it's fictional, so. Yeah. Who or what made the first soft landing on the moon? Yeah, I can't answer that one. I'm going to wait for Lee and Katie to throw their answer up now. No Googling, guys. Not allowed oh, to Oh, too late. We're moving on to the next question. True <laughs> True or false, the South Pole's weather station has measured the lowest surface temperature on Earth. See, look, you've got a 50% chance of getting this one right just with a coin flip. The South Pole's weather station has measured the lowest surface temperature on Earth. True or false? Okay. Question 13. Name the 1982 movie that featured total assimilation by a parasitic alien life form. You know, the ultimate in infection. Name the oh. 1982 movie that featured a total assimilation by a parasitic alien life form. Mm. Good question, mm. that one. It is. And uh, there's a bit of a sequel story uh, to that one, which I'll reveal. Uh, everyone's quickly looking up NDB and 1982 movies. Uh, it's, uh, okay. <laughs> We're too late. We're going to the next yeah. question. Probably question 14. Are. In 2001, John Keogh, he's actually a patent lawyer in Melbourne, he exploited a new legal loophole to get a valid Australian patent on a Circular Transportation Facilitation Device, which is also known as a what? As a thing that doesn't work yet. No, you got, got a valid Australian patent in 2001 on a Circular Transportation Facilitation Device, which is more commonly known as a what? Got me thinking now. <laughs> How are the Greens doing? <laughs> um, they've got a few wrong. They didn't say UFO for this one, did they? <laughs> no, no, they haven't. I haven't seen an answer for this one come up yet. Okay. No, they've, they've got a few wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This quiz has turned into the battle, the battle of the greens. I love it. <laughs> is anyone else answering? <laughs> no, well, I think everyone else. Oh, is not in the comments anyway. Writing their, their 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 answers down. I know Gavin's writing his answers down, but um, this is no. this is very good. Keep these answers coming, guys, because I'm enjoying the battle. <laughs> I like the answer to the moon one. That's the best. I'll tell you later. I'll I'll tell you later on, Fraser. I won't spoil it for okay. <laughs> Just yet. Yeah. All right. Question 15. The movie Contagion was released in the same year as an amateur discovery of a bright sun grazer comet. Uh, now, which year 
and the comet's name. So, you know, you can get one point for each. Incidentally, mm. Cont Contagion is apparently the number one movie on Netflix this year. At the moment? I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's quite, think, yes, it was eerily prophetic uh, from all accounts. I, I think uh, the, the board game um, pandemic might be pretty popular this year as well. Yeah. yeah. So Contagion was released in the same year as an amateur discovery of a bright sun grazer comet. And which year and what was the comet's name? Everybody's now frantically scrolling back through their Netflixes and looking at their credits. They probably are, and they're not meant to be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we go to question 16. Yeah, oh, here we go. You, you won't be able to Google this one. Nay, how's that coming up on your end, Mark? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, 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 we can see Name it. Name this constellation, the one inside the uh, purple oval. Michael Matiazzo says that he's fr he's he wants you to know that he's playing. He's just Michael's uh, not putting his answers in the in the in the comment section yet. So he's right. he's frantically writing them down with a pen and paper. I'm tipping. Yeah. Now, now is he competing with Angela or? <laughs> I don't know, Michael. Are you competing with Angela or are you just competing against yourself? He'll put it there. We'll see what he says. Mm. I think I think Lee might have taken the um the lead in uh, the battle between the greens as well, by the way. Just quiet. Uh, mm. Right, right. Okay. Next okay, question. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully everyone's had time to look at that picture and uh, have it download to their end. Yeah. Okay. You want to give the um. You need to, what we need to do is give the guys with the, the Astro cameras a little bit more time to plate solve that one. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, you, so yeah, I can see the traffic to astrometry dot net spiking right now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Too late. We go to the next one. Okay. Question seventeen. Which Star Wars movie was released in the same year that? The World Health Organization announced the elimination of smallpox. So, which Star Wars movie was released in the same year that uh, smallpox was eliminated? And yeah, people, I know it's hard to keep track of them nowadays. There's so many, plus the remakes, plus the director's cuts, plus the special mixes. I'm gonna can I can I like um, can I throw like just Angus and some of the people watching and say that it wasn't the best Star Wars? I'm sorry, but it wasn't. <laughs> You watched, I'm just, I've thrown some shade and you watch them. They're just going to come flying at me now because I said that. And, and <laughs> it's an argument I have with my brothers all the time. They're adamant that it's the best and I disagree. Ah, right. Well, <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like it when I say that. <laughs> oh, well, you've got peasants with pitchforks outside your front door now, do you? Probably do now. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dressed in cosplay as well. <laughs> I thought Halloween was over. <laughs> <laughs> not for them, it's not. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Going on. All right. Question 18. Another true or false? The final flight to the Hubble Space Telescope occurred during the flu pandemic. The final flight to the Hubble Space Telescope Ooh. occurred during a flu pandemic. That's a good question, that one. Because mm. there have been, been a few. Because it depends which yeah. flu pandemic you're talking about. Mm. Ah. All will be revealed in the answers.
How many questions we got left? Two. Okay. Two more. Okay. Question nineteen. Which Australian city had an outbreak of bubonic plague in nineteen hundred? Which Australian city had an outbreak of bubonic plague? Yes, the Black Death. It's probably Melbourne, knowing Melbourne's luck. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one I definitely don't know the answer to. I'm only saying Melbourne All because, right. you know. Yeah. Final question. I'll show you the pictures on the next slide. But the question is, which one of the following species is classified as a monkey not the beetles yeah. no i'll just i'll just move to the actual pictures now okay which one of these six species is classified as a monkey <laughs> <laughs> all of them <laughs> oh sorry no uh, not it's C. probably not C, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I saw Donald Trump and I just went, oh, they're all <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. To answer this one, just do A, a B, C, D, E, or F. <laughs> yeah. Which, which oh, one of these is classified as a monkey? <laughs> oh, that's gold. I love it. What a what a what a what a question to finish on. Oh, I really wasn't expecting that, and I'm glad you put that one up. Yes, Lee, please, please, please come back with the elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah I thought I thought you'd like that one. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, and what was the question uh, again? I totally forgot what the question yeah, was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which which one of these uh, six species is classified as a monkey? Which one is classified as a monkey? Yep. Only one. Yeah, yeah. Which one of them is classified as a monkey? <laughs> All right. So, have you got uh, by, by, by got... zoologists? That is, you know, by not, zoologists. Not... There you go. Yeah. Yeah. By yeah. zoologists. Have you got yeah. um, answers in your slideshow that we can roll? I do. Or? Yes, that's coming up. Oh, next. let's yeah. go. Mm. Okay, no, right. I'm going gonna, gonna to scroll back and just give a running tally yeah. on well, the um, for the, on the, green, the yeah. Battle of the Greens. Yeah. There we go. All right. Okay. The picture you're looking at now um, was actually photographed by me uh, back in March in uh, Victor Harbour. <laughs> In uh, in one of the shopping centres there, I love this it. Uh, machine normally contains you know soft toys and things for the kids, and uh, for a joke, they replace the soft toys with toilet paper. <laughs> I've now been seeing photos of this thing all over the internet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, You've yeah. Gone Victor Harbour. Yeah, if you're in Victor Harbour, people, go and look up the central shopping centre, the one where Woolies is and uh, Target. Is it still there? Um, well, I haven't actually been in these shops for a few months. It was there as late as uh, August, which is my most recent visit. I think they visit. should just leave it there as a reminder. Well, I, I think so too. It was a great joke. <laughs> and if I'd had $2 at the time I took this photo, I would have played it just for the giggles. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. I like yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So there's another reason to come to South Australia. Yeah. I haven't been there for quite okay. a few years. I, I went there for the beer. Yeah. All righty. Let's move on yes, to some it's... answer times, people. Okay. The first astronomer to definitely see Uranus was John Flamsteed. Oh, the well. The first astronomer royal, founder of the Greenwich Observatory. The Greens are on zero each. Yeah. He saw it in December 1690, but thought it was a star. He even named it with a Flamsteed number, 34 Tory. Mm. 34 Tauri, yeah. And, yeah, John Flamsteed. John First Flamsteed. Definitely known to have seen Uranus, but didn't recognise it as a planet. Which is interesting because... Uh, 
This is uh, Stellarium's calculation of how far Uranus would have moved during the month of December. Wow, it's quite a bit, isn't it? Quite a bit, yeah, it was near the Pleiades. Um, yeah, in a month, it would have moved a fair bit. Then again, you know, we're talking England, midwinter. Yeah. The weather was probably shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking through clouds and rain. <laughs> he might have only seen it on one night. Yeah. Yeah, incidentally, on the Stellarium view, you can see a few other uh, Flamsteed numbers, as we call them 18 Tauri and 32 Tauri, 39 Tauri. Yeah, I can see them all there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's the same guy who came up with the uh, star numbering scheme. Unfortunately, he didn't recognise that it was, you know, moving and, uh, yeah, missed out on the credit. Well, you win something. Yeah, we had to wait another uh, 90 years for Herschel to pick it up. Uh, there we go. So Herschel was the man who actually realised it was a planet. Yeah, it was an actual planet. It were. Even he thought it was a comet at first, but he recognised that it was a solar system object and not a star. Yeah. Anywho, with question two, well... The answer is, of course, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, Katie's <laughs> taken a one-zip lead in the Battle of the Greens. <laughs> and it was actually the guide which had Don't Panic on its cover mm. <laughs> to reassure the viewers. Not to panic. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Next so one. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. For question two. All right, question three. It's Elwood and Jake, or Jake and Elwood. Blues. Oh, it's, they both got that one right. Yep, and the photo here shows them, you know, singing both kinds of music, <laughs> country and western. Country and western. <laughs> <laughs> the old Blues Brothers boys. Yeah, you might remember that scene, yeah. <laughs> ah, a good scene. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, Jake and Elwood. All right. Question four. According to SpaceX, as of the start, they have launched 895 Starlink satellites. Now, for the sake of the Battle of the Greens, are we going nearest to PIN? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll oh. get an estimate. If somebody says about 900 or... I oh, know, Lee said 1,200 yeah. and Katie said 118. Wow, they're think... both way, way off. I don't think we can give either of them a point for that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, now, they have launched 895 of them. I think about 50 of them have re-entered. Oh, really? You know, some of the Yeah, some of the early ones were only put up as for a test and were intended to last for a long. Okay. Yeah. Some of the I think the, Yeah, yeah, like version 0.9, I think it was, of the Starlinks. About half of them are already down again. Okay. Question five. The answer is gravity or gravitation. Ooh. Isaac Newton discovered gravity. So, have a think to yourselves, people. Isaac Newton discovered a fundamental force of the universe while he was locked down for a plague, you know. What have mm. you achieved? <laughs> Just back on the um, on the Starlink one, Michael Michael said he got 900. Is that close enough? I think that's close enough. That's close enough, yeah. yeah. yeah you can take a point for that, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if you got anywhere between eight hundred and a thousand, you'd be near enough. Um, they were launching them at quite a high rate during October. Definitely not one hundred and eighteen, no. No, no, no. Mm. They passed that one <laughs> a while ago. Okay. For question six, uh, an angiosperm is simply a, a flowering flower. plant, mm. plant that flowers. So. Uh, if any of you at home, you know, you've got windows looking out on any kind of garden, chances are you've got a flowering plant within view. Oh, the, the, the Battle of the Greens is drawn even at three each. Ah. 
Ooh, this this could get ugly quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's sleeping on the couch? <laughs> mm. All right. Question seven. Uh, the answer is Star Trek. The uh, reboot version of Star Trek, and that picture is uh, Eric Banner in his uh, makeup as uh, Nero. Yeah, uh, no, he was Borg. Uh, no, he? he was. No, he wasn't. He, no, was, he wasn't uh, Borg. Uh, Romulan, I think. He was Romulan. That's right. But that was the one. Yeah. That wasn't the one with the Borg. The next one was one with the Borg. No. Was that the one with the Borg? I can't remember anymore. It's been so many. No, this is the one where he travelled through time. Um, yeah. Which is how they explain the reboot of the whole franchise. It's an alternate timeline now. Okay. Yeah, a bit different from when he was in The Castle. <laughs> Both good movies, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next one. All right. The third most abundant chemical element in the universe is oxygen. Oh, the greens oxygen. both struck out. Yeah, about 477 atoms per million or just under 1% by weight of visible matter. <laughs> Oxygen. They both went with carbon. Tisk. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there okay. You go. Borg was in first contact with Picard. I do love that movie, the one with the Borg. That was yeah. cool. All right, the moon's orbital period with respect to the stars is about, about 27.3 days. Okay, so are we going nearest to pin on this? We've got a 28.3 and a 28.1. I think we can give that one to the 28.1, can't we? Oh, well, that's not really... Point eight of a day off. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I, think, I think we might have to score zero on both of those. Yeah, no? zero to both yeah. of them then. There we go. Yeah, about 27.3 days sidereal. But full moon to full moon is about 29 and a half days because during the orbit of the moon, the Earth moves on a bit. Okay. With question 10. The Leonids. Uh, there we go. The fuel shower is produced by Comet Temple Tuttle. And they typically occur around the middle of November. And this year we have moonless mornings to uh, see them happen. Uh, looking forward to that. Hardly saw any last year. The moon uh, wiped it out. I might be able to watch some next weekend up at Heathcliff. Okay, yeah. All right. What made the first soft landing on the moon? It was Luna 9. All right. Uh, Would yeah, you like so to know... Soviet space probe. I think Lee's answer for this was a really good one. Golf ball. Uh, a what? <laughs> a golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> that was an Apollo 14. <laughs> <laughs> I played a round of golf on the, up there then. Um, oh, Commander, the Commander Alan Shepard was mm. a golf nut and he actually took along the head of a golf club that screwed into one of their existing tools that they were using on the moon to pick up rocks and so at the end of one of his moon walks he'd uh, put some balls in an outside pocket on his space suit and so at the end of the walk he dropped a couple of the balls onto the moon and uh, then tried to swat them with his makeshift golf club he did hit one and apparently went quite a long way <laughs> it would have <laughs> so, Future archaeologists are going to be puzzled when they go to the Apollo 14 landing site and they see this pair of probably rather sunburnt golf balls sitting up there. <laughs> As I said, it happened in 1966, which was about two years before Hong Kong flu became a problem for us. Okay. Uh, question 12. Uh, the answer is false. It's actually Ooh. the uh, Russian Antarctic station at Vostok has recorded the lowest temperature at least with a weather station, of minus 89.2. The South Pole's only got minus 82.8. Although I think at those kind of temperatures, you're not really going to really care, are you? Yeah. 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 No. You know, you're outside naked, you're dead anyway. I'll stay that fire. Yeah, and there have been some 
measurements done from satellites which suggests there may be temperatures as low as minus 95 on some of the highest parts of the ice cap there. Mm. So I can imagine one day some adventurer is going to trek out there with a thermometer <laughs> just to actually measure it. Power to them. Power to them. Yeah. If they want to, if they want to uh, do that, then let them, yeah. let them do it. All right, the 1982 movie was The Thing. It was oh. set in a, uh, yes, it was set in a base in Antarctica. They discover a crashed alien spaceship and a body which they unwisely bring back to their base and it thaws out. <laughs> yeah, and it starts uh, assimilating them. Maybe they shouldn't have stoked that. And, and the whole base descends into uh, an atmosphere of, you know, paranoia and suspicion because nobody knows anymore who is human and who is the thing. Ooh. And well, there's a remake in the works uh, this year. Ah, that'll be good to watch. Yeah, I'm so just intrigued to see how well they do it. In the Battle of the Greens, we have uh, Katie Green leading 7-5 to five over Lee for those playing along at home. Yeah, okay. And uh, there is a bit of a sequel to the story of this movie. Apparently it didn't do very well in the cinemas when it was released. The reviewers hated it. But since then it's become uh, recognised as a quite a classic of both science fiction and horror. And several bases in Antarctica now have it on their movie playlists for the start of each winter. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a tradition. <laughs> it's a, a timely reminder, don't pick up anything. Any don't pick up anything from a spaceship. Yeah. yeah, Don't bring anything from a spaceship back to base. Makes you wonder about all those researchers who pick up those Antarctic meteorites that have come from Mars or wherever. It's a, yeah. yeah. Don't eat it. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. Question fourteen. Um, John Keogh managed to patent the wheel. What we have there and is nobody patented the wheel prior to that. Well, he he did it actually to expose the shortcomings of the new, improved, simplified Australian patent system that had just been announced. <laughs> Um, that uh, hand-drawn diagram you see on screen is actually part of his patent application, <laughs> which he's read. And I did a quick search on IP Australia the other day, and, yes, the patent application is still listed, but they did quietly revoke it. A couple of years later, probably out of sheer embarrassment <laughs> <laughs> that they'd issued a valid patent for a wheel. Um, he was also awarded an Ig Nobel Prize in 2001 <laughs> for patenting the wheel. <laughs> and uh, this is actually rumoured to be one of the most searched uh, patent applications on the IP Australia. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's gold. A wheel. Yeah. A wheel. So if you were making anything with wheels in it between 2001 and about 2000 and... Looks like 2003. Yeah, you owe the guy money. <laughs> okay, question 15. It was in 2011 and it was Comet Lovejoy, or one of them. So it was in 2011 and Comet Lovejoy, one of Terry's uh, brightest comets. Uh, this photo was actually taken from the space station. Oh, wow. That's a pretty impressive yeah. thing. You can see, yeah, you yeah. see the, yeah. Yeah, you can see all the various air layers down the bottom. Mm. Uh, the comet's head down in it. And, uh, like yep, there's, the there's tons of nice yeah. images on the uh, interwebs of this comet, including on both uh, the ASVs and ASAs websites taken by members. So I thought rather than pick one of those and, you know, make one photographer happy and everybody else jealous, I thought <laughs> a nice neutral one like An this. independent one. <laughs> and so independent. It's, uh, you know, everything's uh, public domain, which is nice. Yeah, it was a good, it was a nice comment. Yeah, I'm hoping Terry discovers another bright one soon. All right. 
Question 16. Uh, the constellation is Corona. And so the bright the last question Michael wants to know is at one point each for the year and yeah. the comment. Yep. There yeah, you one go, point Michael, each. One point yeah. Each. So yeah. Yeah, one point for getting twenty eleven and uh, one point for saying Comet Lovejoy or its official designation. Either works. Okay. The constellation is Corona Australis. And in that photo, uh, taken by me actually, uh, underneath it you can see the Sagittarius teapot upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I want to know how many people actually got this one right. Yeah, or whether they might have gone with one of the other cultural interpretations. Um, in China, for example, it's regarded as a, uh, a river turtle. Or for a lot of the uh, Aboriginal groups in southeastern Australia, it's the mouth of a lily, the frog. Okay, yep. Yeah. Or uh, one of our popular nicknames uh, here in South Australia for it is the dentures. The dentures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah, so Corona Australis. Okay, so finally got the word Corona into this quiz. <laughs> okay, question 17. Um, well, not the best organization start announced smallpox was gone in 1988. Yeah, right was released the same year. Mm. Yeah. So, Mark, you were saying. You, you think this is the best movie or this no, is not the best movie? Not the best or, okay. One. No. Yeah. People, right. people don't like it when I say the first one is my favourite. Well, this was a case that um, actually made more money than his predecessor, which was pretty new at the time. Mm. And, and yeah. I, I quite like um, Rogue One as well, which, other, every, uh, which people look at me strangely. And I think it's because it marries yeah. so nicely into episode four. Yeah. So Lee gets one point, and that's it. But uh, Katie doesn't okay. get any. Oh, sorry. It's tightened uh, up. Yeah, oh, I've just moved on to question seven. eighteen here. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, the final flight did occur during a flu pandemic. Um, Atlantis flew to the space telescope in May two thousand and nine. The two thousand and nine swine flu pandemic. <laughs> There we go. So, true or false? All they both got that one. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Question nineteen. Sydney <laughs> had an outbreak of three hundred and three cases, one hundred and three deaths. And in an effort to, to control it, the state government demanded the demolition of entire precincts, streets, um, suburbs. Um, most of the victims were in the poorer areas of Sydney, places like uh, Rox and Piermont and uh, uh, the likes of that. Wow, so this is something I didn't know yeah, about. Yeah, which when, you know, nowadays those are some of the most incredibly expensive suburbs in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> they back then. The, yeah, no, back then they were slums. Mm. Um, and also, uh, you were also could get, uh, I think it was five shillings per dead rat that you bought in. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it was a big money for a lot of the poor people. Mm, that would have been, I, I can imagine there would have been people hunting them down. Oh, yes. That was, mm. that was the intention of paying the bounty on rats. Yeah. Go and hunt All down right. a rat and get the, bubon, the Black Plague while you're at it. Well, the final question, unfortunately, the, the answer is E, the Japanese macaque, which has this interesting uh, habit of trying to keep warm in winter by um, yeah, having a bathe in hot springs. Can it just be D and E just for fun? <laughs> <laughs> I did say classified by zoologists, not oh, by political observers. I know observers. there's yeah. three people who commented that got that one right. <laughs> Gavin gets double points for uh, putting D and E, I think. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, yeah. In the Battle of the Greens, 
Sorry, Lee, you looks like you lost out seven to nine. Oh, Seven, what, they three, both answered nine, two things, did they? The elephant. Uh, <laughs> uh, Katie answered A and Lee answered C. Oh, dear. So if, okay. if, for those who have been playing along, pop your, your mm. total, your tally in the uh, comments section and let's see how you did. Uh, here we go, yeah. James and saying it was a very hard quiz. It's always a very hard quiz, isn't it? It's always a very hard quiz. That's the tradition. So it makes yeah. it fun. Mm. Curious to see if anybody see got above. Next year. Oh, yeah. I'm curious to know if anyone got above ten. That's 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 what I want to know. I want to know how many. Michael, how many did you get? See if he puts an answer in. All right, I'll swap back to fourteen. The, um... Team Matiazzo scored fourteen. Gavin got eight. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was a lot of fun. So I think we've got a yeah. well, we've got a, a bit of a break now, and then we have the Q and A yep. at um, uh, seven o'clock tonight. So Q and A panel, three ASV members, three ASSA members. Anything yep. you want to ask about astronomy, be it deep sky, planetary, um, just general knowledge, whatever it might be, whatever question you've got, come along, uh, post it in the comments when we're streaming and uh, our experts will do their best to be experts and answer it. Um, Fraser, thank you for yes. your wonderful quiz. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. That's all right. Thank you for putting it together. And everyone, as mm. usual, um, don't forget to get your raffle tickets. I can see some, and, um, some more raffle tickets, so that's good. Yeah, and, can I just do a quick weather update for you there, Mark? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at the... Yeah, I'm looking out the window uh, now in the south of Adelaide. Uh, it's The sky is clear. Yeah, same so here. If you, yeah, so yeah, if no you're doing way. any live stuff from um, you know, the Adelaide uh, members, we are. Not a chance we are. Though, you'll we're, see we're, something. Um, we've got, uh, I think, three cameras from your guys to, to to access and three cameras from the ASV people tonight to access. So uh, yeah, following the quiz, we've got... Sky for the Night mm. with Perry uh, from the ASV. Mm -hmm. and Perry will do a tour of the night sky, and then that's going to lead into our uh, final session, which is the deep sky session. We'll be able to do some planets and some galaxies tonight, definitely with the uh, clear skies we've got at the moment. Good. So that'll be good. Yeah. Oh, I, I actually have a, a night sky tour to run tonight. So good luck with my that. Next, and my next uh, job after this will be to go and load the telescope into the car and. Uh, Ready. I hope uh, they turn out in uh, in on mass or as many as you can have, um, and that um, it's a good tour for you. Yeah, well, actually, we're only allowed to do um, exclusive bookings at this stage. Um, SA Health were quite concerned about people walking into each other in the dark and swapping germs. So, well, keep keep it clean, safe, uh, COVID for COVID friendly, and um, yeah. and have a, a good. A good uh, tour tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll have a yeah. good tour tonight of the night sky as well. Oh, we should, and we have a twenty we have a twenty inch telescope to play with, so oh, we, get some good views. we won't have that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll just be using the uh, the uh, ASV and ASSA members' telescopes. But we should. It we'll, uh, looks looks like we're all going to have fun. That's for sure. So, okay. um, yeah. thank you for for joining us, and everyone, thank you for playing along. And we'll see you yep. at about right. seven yep. o'clock. Right, and hopefully in person next year. Cheers.